Well, it's 5.45 p.m., a sunset edition of 5.45 uh, p.m., Joe. It's one of the, the first times we've actually seen some light behind us in the sky. Uh, Last one before we switch to daylight saving. Then we'll have uh, plenty of sun behind us. Uh, we're going to be taking you through the next few minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news. We get a jam-packed show. Uh, folks, uh, be sure to stick with us here. Uh, for an internet special, we're going to be uh, taking this a uh, little bit farther, a little bit more information for you, and uh, we're going to make sure that uh, if you can join us on our Facebook page uh, or at BrattleboroTV.org that we get you more information. What do we got coming up? Well, we're going to talk a lot about election day town meeting, election results, all sorts of stuff like that. The skate park gets an okay from the WSESU school board moving ahead, and of course it's the anniversary of Fukushima. We'll talk about what's going on in this area to commemorate that. Lots of other footage, including last night's V-Trans meeting, uh, David Sanger, and plenty more. So stick with us right here on 545 Live. Welcome back to this March 8th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. Joe, the sun sets behind us. We're going to take our listeners through a jam-packed show. Got some fun clips and some somber clips as well. We'll talk about all that coming up. But first, uh, that's footage uh, of the film All She Can. It shows Sunday at 7 p.m. at the New England Youth Theater as part of the 2013 Women's Film Festival, the nationally acclaimed benefit uh, for Wyndham County's Women's Freedom Center, the support and advocacy uh, group dedicated to survivors of domestic and sexual violence. Uh, as well as prevention and education activities, all in aid of their mission to help uh, see an area here where violence is not tolerated. Oh, and with a lineup for this film festival that includes titles like Raging Grannies and Jungle Radio, one might be inclined to think it warrants uh, further investigation. So uh, if you are so inclined, the full film lineup trailers and info on the Freedom Center, which includes details uh, also on the many ways you can get help for you or your loved ones, is all at womensfreedomcenter.net. No apostrophe in that. And Joe, uh, you don't have to be ensconced in the midst of a uh, abusive relationship to uh, look for help. There's residual effects, whether it be at you or uh, someone you care about. Women's Freedom Center has all sorts of ways that they help. Uh, we'll move on here, and with that, uh, we'll talk about all this past Tuesday's uh, happenings. Moderation is a lot like medicine. In addition to being election day, March 5th was of course town meeting day. It is not an exact science. With news like Guilford's decision to disband their middle school. Because this is such a touchy issue, I'm going to give facts. And Putney's move to adopt a full-time law enforcement officer. The first three years were paid for on a federal grant. The current year, the Putney paid the, the match amount. Joining visits from Governor Shumlin and all sorts of other Wyndham County legislators in the headlines. Are we smart, considering Vermont Yankee, in taking a state that's cheap to litigate, that has to repay legal expenses, and that has already made the decision on this question? in their entirety from Vernon, Guilford, Dummerston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica were captured on video and turned around within hours on our government sister channel, Channel 10, and our video on demand library at BrattleboroTV.org, where you can skim the more than 30 hours of footage from these town meetings at your leisure. There you go. Some That's good uh, Why not throw some uh, election results in there first? Uh, I want to cut to it here. You were up at the high school with uh, your with often co-captain Daryl Pillsbury. Guy. Yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at some of the results from Tuesday night's uh, races. Moderator Doug Cox, seven sixty-one. Lauren Crisp, seven seventy-nine. 
for the three-year seat, which will be Kate O'Connor one with a total of 985, and Spoonagave had 664. Now for the select board one-year seats, we have John Allen, the winner, with 710 votes, and then we have David Scholes with 580, and it was very close after that with Ian Keel with 564. Now, now I get to send you back into the close-up, back into the script here, Joe, uh, for the next piece of this uh, March 5th madness, as we've dubbed it in our headlines. Well, Perfect. the governor may have had the expansion of broadband and cell phone coverage on his bullet points for everyone in the town meeting stops that he made, but it may have proven a touch touchier in Newfane, where controversy surrounding a proposed construction of a new AT&T cell tower has dominated the debate in Newfane select board meetings all this past fall and winter. And with the Public Service Board approving the tower, this tower, stripping the town once and for all of any chance to influence a decision, residents in close proximity to the soon-to-be 130-foot structure on Oak Hill Road are less than pleased. But for others who found the lack of cell phone service in danger during the mass landline outages of Tropical Storm Irene, this is just the cost of progress, much like the implementation of power lines a century ago. We're not unsensitive to aesthetics. The reason that this location was picked is because we need to be close enough to the people and close enough to where there's existing uh, sources of communications and power so that we can hit as many people as possible. Just uh, some of the uh, hours and hours of heated debate over the proposed AT&T cell phone tower in Newfane will keep you updated. Though it looks like now with a public service board approval, uh, that tower's slated to go in. Next, this weekend will mark two years since Japan was ravaged by a hurricane and earthquake and nuclear meltdown, leaving uh, the homes of more than uh, 130,000 refugees at risk of becoming permanent nuclear waste sites. And while two years has removed the issue from the mainstream media's eye in America, the distinct parallels between Japan's Fukushima Daiichi reactor and its surrounding communities and the towns uh, surrounding Vernon's Vermont Yankee reactor have left many area residents unable to uh, move on, prompting the anti-nuclear affinity group Safe and Green to mark the anniversary with a weekend of events aimed at painting a stark picture of our own region should it find itself in a similar state of disaster, with six towns in the Vermont Yankee area each adopting a sister town uh, in the Fukushima province described by the campaign as, a, uh, as permanent ghost towns. Hundred and sixty thousand refugees after the tsunami earthquake and the beginning of the meltdowns. Of those hundred and sixty thousand nuclear refugees, only twenty seven thousand people have been able to return to their homes. It follows the 8.9 magnitude earthquake, which sent a 10 meter high wall of water inland. <laughs> Soon after the tsunami, the uh, nuclear accident happened from Fukushima Daiichi. I don't compare the low-level radiation or any of that. If you can lose a country, uh, this is not worth doing. So we started reading about these towns in the evacuation zone around Fukushima. There are six of them that they have since determined will be ghost towns. And we thought, what if to commemorate Fukushima, we reach out to the towns in the evacuation zone here around Vermont Yankee? It's amazing to think that 24 miles, people thought they were safe and that was the last thing they were. Everybody has a stake in this un unfolding, ongoing situation. That's sort of the sense of urgency that I feel about this um, nuclear accident. The weekend's events dubbed Voices of Fukushima include Saturday gatherings at Brattleboro, at, in, in Brattleboro at Plenty Park, 
at 1 p.m. and in Putney on the Tavern Green from 1 to 3 p.m. and in the towns of Greenfield, Amherst, and Windle, Mass., followed by a Sunday vigil at noon at Vermont Yankees' Vernon Reactor. The complete schedule can be found at safeandgreencampaign.org. You can also find the full interview with Leslie Sullivan Sachs and Nancy Brow on our YouTube channel. All right, uh, we'll move on and talk about uh, one of the, the buzz stories here. Of course, uh, BASIC seems to uh, make headlines all the time. Uh, I'll take this in next one here. Uh, with approval from the Select Board and Development Review Board coming earlier this year, Wednesday's Wyndham Southeast Supervisory School District Board uh, 4 to nothing vote uh, to approve the Brattleboro Area Skate Park uh, as the last piece needed for the group BASIC uh, to move ahead, at least uh, the uh, last bureaucratic piece, um, to move ahead with construction of the highly, and I guess you could even say outrageously controversial skate park slated to reside in the Crow lot of Green Street in Brattleboro. Now at Wednesday's school board meeting, the park's designer Mike McIntyre, uh, the guru behind skate parks across the nation, or wheel-friendly parks as he calls them, uh, talked about Brattleboro's own plans for uh, the park, something he says uh, are about much, much more than skateboarding. Uh. Crime, prevent well, crime prevention through environmental design and other issues some people may not like. Someone can run out of the car and grab a kid. Some people may not like a ball rolling into the street. Absolutely nothing standing in the way of that skate park now, except, oh, except uh, a, a few quarters in the bucket. Of, a little bit <laughs> of money. Yeah, so uh, right. now uh, if they can... skatepark.com for anyone that wants more information. There you go. Uh, they've got uh, $300,000 to go. Put this uh, park in place. Next, once forced to reschedule, the New York Times chief Washington correspondent, David Sanger, has managed to make it to the Brooks Memorial Library for his talk aimed at unveiling the inner workings of the Obama administration and the use of new weapons and weapon technology. And with drones now a blizzard, or excuse me, now a buzzword nationwide, David Sanger says it's easy to get caught up in the hype. But there are far more complex and often far scarier matters lying just below the surface. President Bush urged President Obama to hold on to probably the most covert, covert program at the time sneaking into the Iranian nuclear facilities with an entirely new weapon of war, a computer worm that had never been tried any other place. Next, the Vermont Agency of Transportation was on hand last night to conduct what they refer to as a 502 hearing for the proposed plan to redesign uh, Putney Road. The formal hearing held on the select board room consisted of an open forum in which citizens were able to address members of VTrans with questions and concerns and then a presentation of the preliminary design concept of the project, which has been years in the works. No significant environmental impacts are anticipated for this project, and for this reason, VTrans anticipates recommending to the Federal Highway Administration that this project, project is to be classed as a categorical exclusion. Well, Joe, we've lost just about all the light behind us, so we better wrap this up. Uh, but I want to talk about the weekend's weather first, courtesy of BUHS-TV, the high school's morning news advisory program here in Brattleboro. Let's uh, see what they have to say. Tomorrow, it will be really sunny, 0% precipitation with a high of 47 and a low of 24. And then finally on Sunday, we're going to have a high of 47, low of 34, 20% precipitation. I've got nothing left to say here, Joe. I think I will... Do we'll, that savings time. Don't forget to set your clocks. I had my goodness, Spring that's ahead. right. We're going to see an entirely Tomorrow different night. view of Brattleboro behind we'll us. Lose an hour, but Come our next in the fall. Tuesday show. There you go. All right. Right on. Night, everybody. Now, for 545 Live, this is Daryl Pillsbury along with my cameraman, Joe Bushy. Back to the studio and roll. Please check the Safe and Green website. We have... Of, we have a dynamic website that I think will... <laughs> it's my baby. It's Leslie's baby. <laughs> uh, 